there are several cultures outside of Western uh, US culture where people use olive oil as part of their of their diet. Um, and in many of the blue zones, I don't know the research around that particularly, where yeah. longest living people actually use some level of oil in their, uh, or beans, you know, people in, in South America. So I'm, a li- I'm curious about this either or dichotomy that seems to be arising in the call around yeah. there being but I found that a lot of non-Western cultures, there is a holistic approach of eating what grows where you live and community being a part of health and healing and oil being a part of it as well. I am curious about that, but also I am curious. I've done Dr. McDougall's um, um, diet and, um, and have seen that something does change in the body quite rapidly, um, but that, you know, so I'm, I'm curious that it doesn't have to be this either or dichotomous adversarial approach because we see across the globe, there are lots of people doing lots of things and living very good lives. Uh, you know, I, I, I'd like to tell you why I think it's the food. You know, again, it has to do with looking at cultures from the past. You know, I have to, I have to believe, in fact, I do know for sure that people living in Japan or China, they had marital disputes, they had problems paying their bills, they had wars, they had all kinds of stresses in their life, yet with high levels of stress, they still avoided 100% having prostate cancer, heart disease, multiple sclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis, et cetera. You know, the only thing that I can see is a big difference in uh, then and now is the fact that they now eat a rich Western diet. Prostate cancer is on the rise in Asia. I, 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 again, I just have to emphasize, you can look at it from my point of view, or you can look at it from, the, from a multifactorial point of view, or you don't really know where to put your fingers on it. It's the food, folks. And once you get a hold of the food, so many things get straightened out. I don't even know that you can change your attitude or your personality. I've been like this my whole life. And as far as exercise goes, uh, you know, we're talking about times when people didn't do anything but walk. Maybe rode a few horses. Hold on one second. Transportation. Oh, hold on one second. Dr. Espinosa, could you lower your speaker? It might be picking up another speaker. Can you lower the volume of that? Uh, sure, I'll try. Okay, go ahead, Dr. McDougall. Well, I just, I just want you to know, I find the idea that um, when you give people a whole bunch of outs, oh, it's probably not your diet. It's probably that you're stressed or maybe you're not taking enough supplements or, you know, maybe you got bad genes. They're paralyzed by this kind of information that allows them to the problem. Whereas you should tell them just, you know, the simple truth. It's the food. You're suffering from food poisoning. And once you straighten that out, so many things get fixed, not just, not just the, the heart disease, not just reducing the growth of cancer, and not just uh, stopping the attacks of arthritis. The constipation goes away too, and your food bill improves, and you lose all that extra body fat, which is so common for people to carry that extra fat. Oh, by the way, I was going to ask you, Dr. Espinoza, have you published any of your research, number one? And number two, do you sell the nutraceuticals that you use in your protocol? Of course, yes, I do. Of course, the, my, the, the nutraceuticals are an extension of my research and experience, and no one is. And so, since it doesn't exist out there, I, I just don't understand what the problem is. I'm sure you have courses, and I, I don't understand what the problem is. I disclose it with all my patients. I disclose it with everyone, and it's an extension of my experience, research, and and everything I've done. So I don't understand why that keeps coming up as a problem. Have you published your research? Excuse me. Have you published your research? I published some research. And where do we okay. find it? You, go, you put PubMed, put S- Gio, Giovanni Espinoza, and you'll see what I've published. I'll, I'll do I sp- that. Yeah. I spend, but I tell you, I tell you more, more importantly, I've looked at other people's research. So here's what I decided to do long ago. I used to be at Columbia University Department of Urology running research on nutraceuticals and things like that. I didn't enjoy it. Doing research for those that love it, Dean Ordinance, that's why I give them 
the credit in the world to put that randomized trial. I didn't enjoy it. It was horrible. The select trial with vitamin E and selenium that many people know about with prostate cancer, I had to cut toenails to then send it to the lab so they could read their selenium levels from the tone. I didn't enjoy it at all. So that's that. Um, and, then I, and then I saw that I'm not going to do that anymore. And then I saw that, wow, other people are doing even better research than I can do. So I started focusing on gathering that research and on the implementation of that research which I think is even more important than just doing research, right? Spending all this time writing papers. And, and then, you know, I, can, I only have like so much time in a day. Um, I wanted to implement that. And as a result, um, I've been very successful doing that, so. Okay. Uh, Joel, would you like to ask a question and where are you from? I am from Ashland, Massachusetts. I thank you very much. It's great to uh, see this august panel you have assembled here. And I have a question about two nutrients. Uh, the first is olive oil. Uh, Dr. Joel Kahn was on this uh, conference earlier and was talking about something called the Cordioprev study. And some of the indications were that uh, olive oil and perhaps some other oils actually reduce inflammation and that this was relatively new information that he was citing as very contrary to what we've been told for quite a while. Uh, I also saw Dr. Kim Williams somewhat agree, not with that specific study, but saying that there, are so, there is some new research that uh, oils, uh, certain oils can reduce and that they should be added to the diet, at least in moderation. Uh, so that's one. And then the other nutrient I was curious about, I hate to bring this up again, but should we or should we not, I guess you can go for yes or no, add uh, flaxseed and chia seed to our oatmeal in the morning? Yes. Uh, I assume I'm going to start. Uh, flaxseed and chia seed, they're whole seeds. I don't think it'll do any harm. It's when you start to grind and you separate the oil from the, the rest of the seed that you run into problems. So, you know, I, I, I can tell you, I just take a basic stand that all free oils are toxic, whether they be olive oil, flaxseed oil, et cetera, they're toxic. They don't exist in nature. You have to process uh, some type of plant part. In other words, to get these oils at the very least, the fat you eat is the fat you wear. And if you eat olive oil fat, you're going to wear it. And I don't think there's anything more attractive about wearing a big belly of olive fat as opposed to a big belly of beef fat. Um, when I hear the studies that uh, Dr. Warners and Dr. Kahn are citing, um, again, this is, these are probably done on people eating the standard American diet and they're eating cheeseburgers and buffalo wings and they're walking around with high levels of inflammation. And if they eat, consume a lot of olive oil, yeah, there's probably some anti-inflammatory components there and it probably lowers their HSCRP a little bit. And they say, ah, da -da, olive oil is good for you, it lowers inflammation. But if someone's eating a whole food plant-based diet, if the only thing going down your gullet is a steady stream of dark leafy greens and rice and beans and fruits and vegetables, your inflammatory state could fit into a flea's navel. It should be so low that you don't need olive oil. You don't have to uh, uh, be uh, com you know, compulsive about uh, you know, this supplement and that supplement. Uh, and so, so again, you got to look at the patient and the food stream, not just Joe America as the uh, as the sample population here. It's not doesn't really apply to folks who've made the plant based uh, evolution in their diet. And so I got a, you know, a real world uh, statement here. Uh, I was railing against oils and one day uh, 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 someone in the audience came up to me and says, Doc, I'm an Asian chef. And I make up a nice uh, Asian curry and I put in two drops of sesame oil. Are you really telling me that those two drops of sesame oil are really going to raise the risk of heart disease or cancer in my patients? And I don't know, it's, it's not going to do that. And it, it's, you know, as the toxicologists say, the dose makes the poison. And the, you know, this tiny amount here. You know, let's you know, be honest, that has to be pretty benign. And a teaspoon, literally a teaspoon of olive oil on, uh, sprayed on some veggie, probably not going to do a whole uh, lot of damage. 
but again, the dose makes the poison. If you have people, you know, we're Americans, if a little is good, more must be better. And so out comes the cruet of olive oil and corn, and, ooh, Mediterranean diet, ooh, Dr. Williams says it's heart healthy, Dr. Khan says it's heart healthy, and they're pouring the oil on and it's dripping off the veggies. Those folks, I think, um, are going to run into some problems from cancer and blood clotting and uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, we got to be realistic about this, but generally oils are an unnatural food uh, that cause mischief in the body used in tiny amounts as a flavoring, I guess is fairly benign, but man, don't, don't push it, but they are not health promoting foods and uh, be aware of which study you're citing. If it's done on standard American folks eating a standard American diet, how much is that really relevant to the conversation we're having now? Shanti, would you like to ask a question and where are you from? Hi, I'm from Quakertown, Pennsylvania. And I just wanted to say thank you so much for this conference and to Dr. Clapper and Dr. McDougall. I have been a whole food plant-based vegan since I was in the womb and I'm 45 years old. Everybody thinks I am half my age and I'm healthier than ever. I've never been to a doctor or needed one. And I am proof that you can really just live a very simple, life and eat very simply as our ancestors did only we're in a new world and we really need to consider all life on this planet the health of everyone and everything and the planet itself so i just mainly wanted to say thank you and i'll volunteer for any kind of study on people who've only spent their lives living this simply which I think is an evolution where, as Dr. McDougall said, we don't need, we shouldn't need doctors ultimately when everybody is in good health. So thank you so much for all the wonderful work you guys have done over a lifetime. I've, I'm eternally grateful. You're welcome. <laughs> Benny, would you like to ask a question and where are you from? Uh, from California. So 5,000 years of human history, and we still can't agree what to eat, even on this great panel. <laughs> Talking about an optimal diet, I personally think life begets life, and dead and processed foods beget disease and deaths. So fresh fruits and veggies are best for Genesis 129. If not fully raw, what percent raw is best for health? Well, I, the diet I recommend is of cooked food. Uh, uh, you can't eat raw brown rice. You can't eat raw, well, maybe you can, but it's hard to eat raw corn and raw potatoes. So it's a cooked food diet. How, what percent needs to be raw to make it better than a cooked food starch-based diet? None. You know, cooking, cooking is the reason that we're human primates. And we require that uh, evolution to, to harness fire. That's why we have the brain that we have that's three times the size of a chimpanzee. It's because we were able to switch from raw food to cook food. We were able to switch from fruits and non-perishable vegetables, green and yellow vegetables to starch. That was the, the evolution that really changed us from lesser primates to human beings. So cooking's the natural diet of people. So I'm gonna differ with my dear friend and colleague, Dr. McDougall. Um, I think there is something to raw foods um, that is lost where even, I didn't used to believe this. I think, you know, two minutes in a vegetable steamer, are you really gonna change the kale uh, composition? Um, I find my folks with inflammatory diseases do better on salads and fruits. When they add in a lot of cooked vegetables, their, their inflammation gets worse. I think there's something to, um, to having a significant component of your diet uncooked, uh, at least one big salad every day. I think it's really important. And a couple pieces of fruit, which would be raw. Uh, are, I think there is something. I, I, I can't get down to the granular science, what it exactly is in the raw vegetables. But I think uh, having a significant amount of raw vegetables uh, is, is beneficial. The third, 20, 30, 40% depends if you're doing it by calories or by weight or whatever, but at least have a big honker salad every day with lots of colorful vegetables in there. Uh, I think uh, you're better off than eating everything cooked. 
Well, I, you know, it's not that we exclude raw food from our program. We don't, you know that, Michael. Right. It's just, you know, the idea that raw food is going to be some type of ma magical change to solve the problems. You know, I haven't seen it and I'm glad you have. Megan, would you like to ask a question or where are you from? Hi, uh, yes, I would. I am from St. Louis, Missouri. And I have been whole food plant-based for five, six years, um, actually since I saw uh, McDougal in Food Choices, which was such a great documentary. I never looked back. Uh, and ever since I have been educating myself to the best of my abilities. Uh, and recently uh, within this conference I actually decided I am gonna go back to school. And I was looking at registered dietetics and I wanted to know um, just because I want to be able to reach out and help people the way that you guys uh, helped me and so many of us listening and so many others, is registered dietetics, uh, you think, the best route to go about getting to people and, um, you know, being able to be a service to the whole plant-based movement? I, I think you need to get some type of ticket, whether it be a... Uh a DO, an MD, an RD, or you know, natural, whatever. I think you need to have some type of certification. And uh, at least that gives you credibility so you can talk to people who you, you feel important to talk to, like your colleagues and your clientele. Now, once you get this ticket, you know, this certification that you have been at least educated and certified to know something, then you go out and practice what you know to be true. Nobody's going to be able to take that certificate away from you. And you will be able to, you know, practice what you've learned. And hopefully you'll teach people a whole food plant-based diet based on starch. Let's hope so. A little exercise, a little sunshine. They'll do great. I absolutely, I, I do plan on um, uh, passing that message, your message along. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, Steve. Um, I need to attend to my family. Uh, they're still waiting for me. And it's Friday night. So. Can I sign off? Yes, thank you so much. My pleasure. Dr. Espinosa, we greatly appreciate Take you care. coming and offering your thoughts. Thank you so we'll, much. We'll, we'll miss you, Dr. Espinosa. It's my thank pleasure. you, sir. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Well done. Yuran, would you like to ask a question or where are you from? Hi, uh, thank you for getting, getting me asking. Uh, I'm from uh, Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, I'm plant-based diet. Uh, BMI 21, my blood test result are within, within the range, except of the omega-3 index, which is uh, came up as 1%, although I <laughs> eat on a daily basis, uh, ground flax seed and walnuts and many nuts and seeds. I uh, would like to uh, understand from you how what you recommend to uh, such, such a case that, you know, yeah, the omega level is, is low. We understand how it's important it is. Uh, and although I'm, I'm taking you know, nuts and seeds and ground, ground flex seeds. Thank you. Uh, can you repeat the question, Steve? Did you understand the gist of it? Yeah. So can, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead again. So, so again, I'm, I'm plant-based diet that, uh, that uh, all, all, all my factors are within the range except of the omega-3 index. That is one percent, although it's need to be above five. So my question is: although I'm I'm eating on a daily basis ground flax seeds uh, and walnuts and some other omega three seeds, my question for you: how would you recommend to such a, a patient or person to increase his omega three levels? I, I would stop getting the test. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're, you're, you're being sent off in a nonsense direction. Plants make omega-3s. No animal does. No fish does. Just eat the plants. You cannot possibly miss. <clears throat> You'll get all of your alpha linoleic acid, all of your EPA, all of your DHA, and the other stuff that they try and sell you in supplement bottles. It's nonsense. Get it from the plants. Yeah, there's serious question about this blood test, the omega check, uh, how much omega-3s are in the red cell envelopes there. Um, well, th that's uh, not really a, a valid measurement of 
the most important reactions and that's what's happening in your brain tissue and um, lots of DHA and EPA, et cetera, gets made in the brain tissue itself. The, the, most of the um, ALA, the <clears throat> linolenic acid that's in the flax seeds and the walnuts goes right into the cells. Now the vast, 90% of it, not out in the bloodstream, it's in your cells. And it's the cells who decide how much of that ALA to turn into EPA and DHA. And the blood test doesn't reflect that. And I'm getting really dis uh, disenchanted with the, these all omega-6s. You're chasing a number that doesn't really tell you what's happening in your brain tissue, which is the real specter of this dementia that's hanging over here. Um, and so uh, like Dr. McDougall says, uh, I would stop getting the test. I, uh, no matter how much walnuts and flaxseed you eat, your, that, your blood test is not going to change. And it doesn't really reflect what's really going on in your brain tissue there. It's not an accurate test. Uh, I would stop getting it. I've stopped getting it as well. Don't you see what's going on? You're, you're, you're having tests done that end up in creating a tremendous amount of business. You know, it creates business for the doctors, for the laboratories, for the supplement salespeople, for the supplement manufacturers. This is business, ladies and gentlemen. You know, you're, you're being sold based upon a whole bunch of manufacturers just make, want to make a ton of money. They don't really care about your health. Lori, would you like to ask a question and where are you from? Hey, I'm... Um from Birmingham, Alabama. And I just want to say thank you so much. Dr. Clapper and Dr. McDougall are my heroes. I've, Dr. Clapper, I've heard many times on the Holistic Holiday at Seas uh, lectures. And uh -huh. Dr. McDougall, I don't know if you remember, but my husband and son and I attended your program in December of 2016. And uh -huh. I just wanted to share that my we went there because my son um, as a young child was diagnosed with type one diabetes. And then at age 23 was diagnosed with um, MS. And so we started researching for, you know, alternative to the toxic medicines that they push you for MS. And Dr. McDougall, um, you mentioned Dr. Swank and we found him. And so we went to the program and I just want to share that my son is doing absolutely wonderful. We've been following um, a whole food plant-based diet since 2016. And he is um, on no medications for MS whatsoever. He runs regularly um, um, marathons, half marathons, 10 Ks. Um, he's just in great shape. And uh, we're just so, so thankful for you guys. I just, I just can't express enough. Um, I did have one question though. And that is something you said just recently, Dr. McDougall, about the flax seeds and not uh, grinding them. If you put them in a green smoothie or something, um, I, and some people say grind them in a coffee grinder before to get the extra benefit. I, I, I'm <coughs> confused about that. What happens is you've got the whole seed, which has a, a very strong non-digestible coat around it. So the flax seed goes through the intestinal tract pretty much undigested. Once you break it up with a, you know, a blender or grinder, and what you do is you change the physical composition of the food. And in particular, you re release the fats. And so now you're dealing with something where the internal contents of this flaxseed becomes exposed, i.e., in other words, you're eating a lot of fat. And of course, when you strip the, the fiber and all the other material away, and you're left with free oil, then you're leave, left with something, uh, something that's even more distant from the natural flaxseed. So, you know, flax seeds are probably okay for you because they're not digested, you know, and they also cause a, a better bowel movement. So that's why people sometimes take them. But I don't think you need them for good health. Okay, thank you. Again, thank you so much, we love you. <laughs> okay, uh, Dr. McDougall and Dr. Clapper, why don't you make your closing statement to summarize your final thoughts before we sign off for the evening? Are you waiting for me, Michael? Yes, sir. After you, sir. All right. Well, thank you. Well, it, it's been a pleasure to talk to the group here. And uh, it, it troubles me greatly to see people uh, be led in directions that are profitable for business and don't result in good outcomes. And you're, you're going to hear a lot of people at this conference and other conferences. And I, I think what you owe yourself is to test what they have to say. You know, listen to what they have to say and make sure it's not going to kill you if you follow the
program or the protocol. Then think of what it would cost you in time, money, and effort to put it to a test. And then I will tell you folks, the body heals in about four months. If you're not better from whatever treatment is recommended within four months, you're wasting your time and your money. And I would certainly put what Dr. Clapper and I recommend to the test to any of you. Do what we suggest for a week, 12 days. Certainly by four months, I'll admit that, you know, we can't help you. Doesn't cost you anything. It's kind for the planet. Solves all kinds of health problems, all the way from obesity to constipation. Why would you pass up something so good? Here, here. Uh, hard for me to uh, put a PS on that. Um, we're plant-eating hominids. We have basically the same digestive system that our gorilla and bonobo cousins have. They're up in the trees eating leaves and fruits, and they don't develop diabetes. They don't develop high blood pressure. They don't develop clogged arteries. Um, a, a whole food plant-based diet will leave you lean and healthy and clean on the inside. And, and we just can no longer ignore the cost that an animal-based diet inflicts upon planet Earth. What right do we have to slaughter 80 billion living creatures every year, a trillion sea creatures every year, uh, to inflict death on such an industrial scale on these innocent animals? We're, we're, we're killing, you know, like Dr. Rao says, the, the, the killing machine and the burning machine are destroying us. We're burning the forests and we're killing the animals. That needs to stop, and it starts with what we order for lunch. When you are pushing that cart down the supermarket aisle and deciding what to put in the basket, and when you're sitting at restaurant with that menu in front of you, uh, that's the time to, to listen to your better angels there. Every time you say, I'll have the beef, I'll have the chicken, your children's world gets a little drier, a little deader. Um, it's time for us to affirm life on every level, and that starts with what we're having for dinner and having for lunch, and a whole food plant-based diet is a life-affirming diet on every level. It's time to really uh, accept that and, and act on it, and if we do that, the earth will heal, will heal, and, uh, uh, and uh, we can talk about lighter, happier things at the next conference. Thank you, Steve, for the invitation, for, for putting on this remarkable conference, and for trying to get light out to uh, all these thousands and thousands of people who are participating. Uh, the communicators are just as valuable as the doctors and the researchers, et cetera. So thank you for being such a good communicator. It's a great service that you're doing. Mm -hmm.